Good. Go live. What <laughs> I should have done is actually, oh, before I click and go live, I could have reduced the latency to ultra low latency, which might have reduced the delay. Um, it's fine. I think that's we've had 10 seconds of us chatting away. Emily, hello. Hello. <laughs> hello. Merry festive greetings. Hello, hello. Uh, wait a minute. Let's, tell you what, let's just immediately go into uh, big face, uh, too, too, too large face. Hello, Emily. Hello. Hello. Festive, festive greetings. Um, is that a Greens for HS2 t-shirt? Yes, it is. Oh, sensational. My one's looking a bit tired. I need to buy a new one then. My... Actually, it's, yeah, it's, I it's, save it for the big occasions. Absolutely, like yeah. Elizabeth yeah, yeah. line opening, things like that. Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, yes, uh, I'm I'm drinking from a pint glass, but this is just hot juice. It's hot cor- mix of ginger and lime hot cordial uh, because it's that kind of Christmas. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm just drinking water, so we're not. Oh, we we are. So so we may not be quite. A, well, you know what? We're gonna be. You're high on gingerbread sugar for reasons that will become ooh, clear to those who haven't been following the Randall Round Pod Twitter uh, yeah. feed uh, today. Um, uh, and I, well, and there's enough sugar in this to sink a battleship. So actually, we, we are probably going to be giddy, but sort of different giddy to, to last time. Um, how's your Christmas been? Is it, have, you, have you had a nice break? Have you had a nice holiday uh, so far? Yeah, it's been pretty nice, pretty pretty laid back. Um, not, not anything particularly exciting. Um, Lots of train-related gifts and things like that. Yes. Uh, Paul and I ended up getting each other the same underground game. <laughs> so we were like, oh, okay, guess we have two of these now. Does that mean you can double up and like triple, like, like quadruple the length of the game? Or I have is... no idea. We have yet to play it. Um, I've. He also got my old Nintendo 64 that I talk about frequently and had Amazing. my parents send it to me. So I've been playing like... Goldeneye. Yes. I've been playing Mario Party, the best games. It's been it's been a great time. <laughs> oh yeah, we uh, we we had almost no. We had basically no presents. Shout out to the couple of people who did send presents. Hello, everyone who's watching. You did send presents, um, except my parent. We met my parents in Chester randomly yesterday, and they, and they did hand us a few gifts. So we did have a few. The only present present that isn't edible we've received is um, is a, a game, a board game. Called the I can't remember, was it the Great Tour. I should have brought it up. The Great Tour of Britain. It looks a little bit telegraphy, but apparently it's on on the great on the railways of Britain, and it's a chase game. Uh, I have no idea. It's one for Dean and I to play, uh, like on very low sleep at some point in the next sort of three or four months. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm sure. Yeah, but um, anyway, yeah. So Emily, thanks so much for joining us again. Uh, a year later from from last time you're on, we 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 need to have we need to do a non festive episode where we where we are a bit more serious and talk talk more grand uh, serious themes. But actually, we had I had so much fun last year. It was such a fun episode, the Edible Stations episode, which. I still get people talking to me like, what was going on on that episode? And what? how did you think of this? And I, I have no good answer. Yeah, it was great. I just, <laughs> it, it's just a new way to view railways. Yeah. And I think yeah, that's, yeah. that's a lot of fun. Think edible. That's, that's, that's the lens it's through still, which we should It think. still comes into my head as I see stations. I was out in yep. some stations in, in East Riding of Yorkshire a little while ago. And I was like, oh yeah, maybe this, maybe this. Yeah. Is that is that is that blueberry colored? Yeah, 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 that's it. Yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness, yeah, absolutely. So, but this year we're doing something a bit different, which is if I return to to No Face before we kick the episode off, um, we're doing an advent of oddities, an idea which I made up about a week ago. Uh, no, it's a bit early. It's kind of early in the month, and I messaged a few people about this and um, and, and asked if, if if they could. Well, let's just say there might be a few little uh, cameo hellos, um, but. It's episode 146. So before we crank, kind of jump into the episode, I've started getting into the theme of, of talking about trains that are the episode number. I don't know why I've done this because I create weird little traditions that are a thing. Anyway, the the, the DBAG class 146 because there is no British Rail class 146. So here is a Deutsche Bahn class 146 in the snow, looking festive. Isn't that lovely? Um, marvelous. Um, that's. That's that's all we've got. For, actually, there's two of them because it's kind of ho- it's, it's dead hauling another one by the look of it. Anyway, lovely electric trains. Um, that's quite enough of that. We are going to do. We're going to jump into the advent, the rail natter advent calendar momentarily. Um, everyone uh, from Emily and I, welcome to tonight's rail natter. <laughs> Festive in City 225 fades away. There it goes. Of 
course, yes. Yeah, so the, we were talking. We were indeed talking about. Let's get our wee faces up in the top corner. We were talking about um, episode ninety four, which was a year ago. Golly, mm-hmm. ten of the world's most edible looking railway stations, and um, it was a feast. Literally, it was a feast, and metaphorically a feast. Um, at, at some point, we will have to do a meal where we have all of the ten edible railway stations as courses you know and in some way arrange those courses as I, not, the one yeah. in, the one in stockholm was just bags of flour so i feel like that yeah we might have to we, might have we to need have... to do something with that <laughs> yeah, that's a very good point yeah yeah do something with the bags of flour rather than just eat the flour uh, i suppose you could use them as those party games where you kind of you know make a, a you turn an upside down bowl full of flour and you have like a fig in it or something that, that's a that's a that, you could do that but i remember yeah. doing a game once where you had to like carry bags of flour on your back without them exploding at, at some campfire or something oh we goodness. could we could make a giant mess with that yeah i was gonna say also what's quite good it, particularly if you're in a scout hut is that um aerated flour is exceptionally flammable and quite explosive. So we as scouts always used to have fun threatening our scout leader when I was a scout. I, I would not recommend that to anyone. Um, uh, as a Girl scout guys leader... Girl were a bit more tame than that, I think. We weren't trying to blow anything up. But... <laughs> yeah, well, when you're in Scotland, uh, in the northeast of Scotland, and there's, there's nothing better to do than threaten to blow up the mouldy scout hut that you're in uh, with, with flower explosives. Anyway, um, so that was the fun we had last time. So I thought, well, we're just not going to top that. So I need to think of a new format for us to kind of be entertained by. And I came up with this... This thing here, which is the Rail Natter Advent of Oddities. <laughs> uh, and I don't know what this is, everyone, other than a, a snowy series of doors through which we could get any little oddity if we enter through these doors. Um, we, the, the, these little doors may provide uh, Emily and I some thought. We may have thoughts after watching them. Um, some of them might, might, may involve some friends. And it might, if this works, it might become an annual thing where this is the Christmas special. Um, this year, we're, we're this is live. We're both here. Hello, this is literally yeah. live. I can, I, I, I don't know. Someone in the chat, tell me to do a thing and I'll do it to prove that or Emily or I can do a thing to prove that it's live. I can hold my phone up. Look, Wednesday, the 28th of December. There, yeah, I've there. got. Uh, no, go, no. Yeah, 28th. Yeah, 28th. There we go. It's, we can prove it. I've got a, the, the, there's a mince pie here. Look, there we are. Anyway, I can um, read people's posts. Something can, about a Thames Link Roundel. Yeah, Thames Link Roundel reminds me of the bingo. Oh yeah, the bingo is out. I forget. Keep forgetting to send the link. The bingo is back. Um, uh, what is it? Railnatter.net slash bingo. Is that it? Well, there is. This is a weird thing. So Emily, we're getting distracted already because this is a Railnatter. Railnatter.net slash bingo. Um, we have bingo. No, that doesn't exist. It's somewhere. I can't remember where. There is Rail Natter bingo. And um, uh, and it's because I say lots of things repetitively. Because when you're doing a recording, particularly yeah. live, you autopilot into like a, a series of like different stock phrases. And it happens. And, and I suppose this oh. is part, this feeds into like creating. No, go on, Emily. You, oh, you no, know. I've been editing my own voice on the podcast recently. And it's like me saying, What's really interesting about this 400 times? And I'm like, just to stop. We're starting every sentence with now or so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for me, it's the worst one that I've ever listened back to was when I was um, chatting to Petrock Trelawney on uh, BBC Radio 3, which was a great privilege. Uh, I'd recommend everyone wakes up to, to, to Petrock on Radio, BBC Radio 3. Um, and he was uh, very, weirdly, I was being interviewed in York about railway-based things, um, and I answered every single one of his questions the first word I answered every question with was absolutely. And it, I didn't do it once. I didn't do it twice. I didn't do it three times. I think I did it five times in a row where I said, uh, okay. absolutely. And then answered the question. Um, I just winced myself inside out when I then listened back to that. Uh, so yes. Uh, You're just stuff. very, very keen. Absolutely. Yeah, it, absolutely. Well, you know, he was suggesting interesting things and I was agreeing. Uh, everyone's saying eat the pie. I'll take a bite of the pie then. Uh, look, here's, here's the, here's the pie. Uh, Right, it's just I tell you, you know, I could, why why are you wanting me to do this, pe- people? Here is the pie. I'm gonna take a small bite of the pie, so I'm not just mouthful. It, it, Emma, if you've got you haven't got any snacks with no, you, have you? But someone was saying about hot air balloons, and there is a bag of balloons behind me, so mm-hmm. I don't know. Seem to to work. Mm-hmm. Mm. Be mm. festive here. Yeah, there it is. That's quite nice mince pie. The uh, Sainsbury's taste a difference mince pies. Strong recommend. Not My bad. favorite ones, I had some frangipan ones that were very, very nice, like frangipan topped. Oh, they were cracking. Mm. Anyway, we digress horribly. Emily, as guest, um, as returning champion, you get to pick which of our doors 
you first want to us to us to us to open and have a look at? I was trying to think of like meaningful reasons to pick numbers oh, yeah. just for <laughs> like a theme thing. Um, and I actually am going to start with one, but because the gr- the orange background reminds me of Overground, and there is one new Overground station this year, Barking Riverside. So ah. that's my reasoning behind that. Oh, which very nearly became one of these, actually, because Tim and I went to have a look at it, and we both respectively made videos e- each yes. other, which was good fun. Uh, Barking Riverside, also because Arcadis did the design of it. I'm not, yeah. Anyway, so my, my my company I work for. Anyway, right. Let's just let's just see if the technology works, everyone. Let's let's, let's see. see. Ooh. So I'm uh, I'm in the Tate, you know, um, which is a very cool building. Um, put Tate and Lyle to one side for a moment. I think I might be wrong, but I think London's broadest rail gauge is in here because above me, if I rotate, you can see there. Right, you can see the two corners here of the screen. In one corner there, and one corner that side, are two massive wrought iron girders. Upon each side rests a rail, and over there is a traversing crane that runs along them. I think this will be the broadest gauge in London. I'm not sure though. Can anyone best that? Hmm. Oh, that was a good selection actually. So, um, yeah, uh, for anyone who's not sure, Emily is currently listening to the audio at the same time that you're listening to it because my technology is so rubbish, the audio cannot find its way through the internet tubes into Emily's ears. Um, thankfully, this is a nice easy one. I'm in the Tate. Emily, and I'm just pointing at the traverser above and yep. saying that I think it's London's broadest gauge. Yes, um, I got that far on it. Yes. Um, uh, it was interesting because I was at Battersea Power Station for the first time on Boxing Day. Mm. Uh, not the station station, but yeah, the yeah. actual power station. And we were also looking at some of the, the work. Is there a traverser in Battersea Power Station and is it still functioning? I mm. don't think so. But the, we were just looking at some of the mechanics on the ceiling. Yeah. Um, I didn't know that was in the Tate. So I, so the Tate one, I think the Tate one still works for installations. I, someone in the chat, correct me on that. So yeah, Michael C is saying Battersea Power Station. A few people, Battersea Power Station. Yeah, yeah. But is the Battersea, the question for me is, is the Battersea Power Station one functioning? Because if it is functioning, then that might take it. Because I think Battersea Power Station main hall is larger than the Tate's main hall, I think. So there were, we were looking at the, the mechanics of this when we were there. And there's things like, there's a car showroom that is suspended from the ceiling. And obviously the things it's suspended on are modern. They are on, you know, they are attached to the original yeah. girders that go across, but the suspension is modern. And part of me thinks that there was like, the idea was to put it on one of the original cranes and then that didn't work for whatever reason. Ah. And, or was it just inspired maybe by the aesthetics of having the original cranes there? But I don't know if they still move. Interesting. Well, yeah. Well, there, okay. So, so that's they are an action for everyone in the chat. Identify whether the the Battersea Power Station one functions and what the what the gauge is. And it, extra brownie points if you can work out what the gauge of the of the Tate one is. But but I think that's that's London's broad gauge railway in in the broadest sense of the word, um, which is fun. Maybe more on that later. Maybe we can do an episode where we go and see it, watch it in action. Anyway, um, so well, that was number one. That was that wasn't a bad place to start. Um, yeah. Uh, there we go. Oh, there's a few. Richard Smith is asking whether any moving stadium roofs run on rails, like Wembley or Centre Court. Hmm. There's, there's a rail now episode in this, isn't there? All the excessive broad gauge <laughs> operation around the place. Anyway, um, I digress. Right. Emily, uh, it's Yeah, I haven't thought of reasons for any other numbers yet, simply because I was busy trying to half watch this on a different yeah. screen. <laughs> I'm uh, sorry. Normally we don't make our guests work quite as hard. Um, I'm just going to go with uh, seven because I like the number seven. Seven. I like number seven as well. Number seven. Hmm. Oh, this one's, this is silent. So you don't need to change your audio over, which is good. Um, So this, everyone uh, listening, this is the, uh, Emily probably can't hear us because she's swapped the the audio over. Oh, you can hear. Good. Yeah, fine. Um, This one is, uh, this is the archive, Network Rail Archives in the north of York. So there's no audio for this one. Um, There is a... There is so much to explore in here, and I'm undoubtedly going to do a a rail natter or more multiple rail natters in here, looking at particular things. Tim and I want to go up. David wants to come up here. Uh, Doctor DT, um, uh, your namesake, in fact, Emily. Doctor David Turner. Um, he has the same name as my dad. Yeah. Um, uh, oh, really? Yeah. Okay. And um, but there's so much. These are Brunelia drawings. There's the actual drawings from Box Tunnel. 
Like it's just the, the stuff in here is like. Oh my goodness! This is some, and it's it's like the Indiana Jones a bit. It's like that you know the scene at the end of Indiana Jones with all this archival stuff just piled up in this kind of atmosphere controlled uh, room. And I did a little um, I did a little uh, advent calendar thing last year for Network Rail where I did a little visit to this. Anyway, very very cool. Um, it's a very cool archive. Uh, I, it's I definitely want to do some things. So if you've got any particular requests for things you'd be interested to look at, anyone out there, uh, then then do join. But yeah, that's a that's a that's a, that's definitely a fun one. Um, I need to, you know what I need to do actually is is I need to uh, I need to do this, which is oh I need to uh, right click and go oh I'm going to go pointer options and make my ink color white mm -hmm. uh, because you know what I'm not going to remember Emily. Is which ones we did. Correct. Okay, so cross off one and seven. That's one and seven. We... There. One and there seven have been crossed off. <laughs> Good. Um, thankfully, I know the keyboard shortcuts to switch between pen and clicker because I need click at the moment to make this shonky PowerPoint presentation work. Um, okay, well, that's two done. One and seven. Uh, that was quite an interesting one. Um, anyway. Yeah, I, I think it's... I, I love a good archive. Um mm. I used to work at the Houses of Parliament and there was one day they got our team to help out in the archive oh. cleaning Victorian laws. And Amazing. they were all about railways because basically mm. every law in the period passed was about a railway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it, it was kept... so amazing because it was just all these different lines that probably all of which were cut in beaching. But just over and over and over mm. again, just seeing all these laws as they got passed, some of which probably were never built. But it's, well, it's interesting, actually. There's, so uh, we'll we'll maybe circle back to that idea soon, actually, because there's some, there's there's some there's some fun connections in in amongst these that uh, un, entirely unplanned. But uh, it's interesting you say that. Anyway, so one and seven. What what next? I'll hit up ten because I'm born on the tenth of February. Oh, very so nice. Did we discuss that we're both early Feb or early to mid Feb babies before last time? We didn't discuss that, but I was on your Twitter today and it had your date of birth, and I was like, "Oh, yeah. we have very very nearby birthdays." That's it. So uh, number ten, let's go. Let's see what number ten is. I honestly can't remember. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna mute and oh, turn. Let's, uh... oh. <laughs> there we go. Bob B-roll. This actual. So this, this is the toilet inside the Borough Market Junction signal box at the National Railway Museum. So there is, so this, this, this setup. Thankfully, there's no audio for you to hear on this one, Emily. I should have said again. You, 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 you get away with this one. This, this, this um, throne here is, I guess, in exactly the condition it was when they lifted this box up from Borough Market Junction put it on the back of a lorry and drove it to York. Um, with the loo roll still in place, I mean loo roll, by which we mean a newspaper extract. So, um, yeah, it's kind of, a, it's weird. It's very strange, but I love the idea where the fact that you have, the, I love the fact that toilets are also being preserved in museums. <laughs> this railway toilet. Uh, we, were trying to, we were trying to thumb through the newspaper and then realised that we should definitely not be handling it because, good God, I mean, you know, age kills all disease, right? That's that's definitely medically correct. Uh, uh, this is not medical advice. Do not listen to this. Um, anyway, so there we are, number 10. This is definitely a holding pattern one for another video that I thought I might have been getting today, but didn't. And this but you one got a toilet out of it. So I got, everyone got a toilet out of it. Anyway. I mean, there's lots of ones that still... The, um, places like Aldwych Disused Station has original urinals in yeah. it, as does uh, York Road. There's some, there's some good toilet history out there there is there is i you know what there, there's as with everything there is a, there, there is and, and this is what's kind of interesting about about history and about railways as a microcosm within history is that is that there is in fact there's a book the book eminent victorians which is which is a good fun history book and it's kind of like the early part of postmodern history i think it talks about the fact that you that history is not you, you can never discover all of it you can't even discover large sections of it you just row out onto this big dark ocean drop a little bucket down, lift the bucket back up and sort of inspect what's in the bucket and then try and, and you can keep, do that as many times as you like, but you'll never know the whole ocean. It's, in, it's not, it's not knowable. Mm -hmm. But the fun of that is that whatever bucket you come up, you get a little microcosm and toilets uh, hidden around across, particularly hidden ones in London where you've got so many, you know, 
uh, you know, whether it's the underground, you know, underneath the, 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 the lower floors of a, of a department store that's been, you know, closed up or whether it's or X tube stations, whatever it happens to be, um, an interesting microcosm. Even if you did just, if you just looked at the, um, the, the loo roll that they have, it's probably, particularly if it's a newspaper, plenty to learn. Anyway. It is one of those things that, like, you hear the fact that people always used old Sears catalogs or newspapers or whatever as toilet paper, and you're like, oh, no, that, that's, yep, you can there, actually yep. see that in situ. Inky. Anyway, um, all right, now, now, okay, so we, we can score off number 10. Lovely. Uh, yep. We're getting there. This format, so this this format that I've just invented and that that uh, might that I was thinking, is it going to work? That's all right. We've 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 learned some things possibly. Um, actually, we've learned nothing, but we have we've we've looked at some things. So we're okay. running out of numbers already, uh, which is which is fun. Emily, yeah, sorry, I'm 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 getting the sound back from the other one. I keep trying to go forward to the live, and then I end up on a different episode, and I'm like, yes, oh, I no. do want to abolish the <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. but this isn't what I want to talk about. Uh, I've, um, I've made you work far too hard. I'm so sorry. That's quite all right. Uh, let's do number five. Number five. Let's do number five. What is number five? I, I, I'm saying, like, I don't know what these are. No, no, everyone, I quite genuinely have forgotten what is behind all of these. So, uh, uh, and hopefully all of you watching know how confused I am uh, and how easily I forget things. Right, number five. Let's have Hello, it. my oh. name's Simon Kendler, and I'm here at uh, one of my favourite stations, Harrow and Wheelstone. There it is. Now, uh, there's a few interesting things about Harrow and Wheelstone and why it's one of my favourite stations. Uh, it's got a lot of historical significance, but also lots of personal significance. Um, it has the quirks of being a national rail station with underground roundels on mainline platforms where trains flash through on the West Coast mainline um, at 125 miles an hour, uh, which is also one of, one of the most congested and busiest rail corridors in Europe, the southern end of the West Coast mainline that I'm standing at the southern end of. Um, about 13, 11 to 13 miles outside of London. And also one of the busiest freight corridors that we have in the country, which is quite interesting. Uh, and it's also just over there on the ticket hall, at platform one at about 90, 92-ish, that an express train passed through, terrified me and thrilled me in equal measure. And since then, I've been a railway person. So pretty much all of my life, and it all started here at Harrow and Willstone. Um, also have the tragic incident just over 70 years ago on the 8th of October 1952 with the Harrow uh, disaster where a train just on this platform here crashed into one that stopped uh, and caused um, a, a, massive, uh, a massive loss of life. And we learnt that uh, signalling systems and, and um, technologies, uh, those, those are good things to have uh, and have more of and um, safe operations and uh, investing in them. Those are good ideas. Um, but yes, it's one of my favourite stations. It really has a bit of everything. It's got the underground, it's got the overground, it's got the city, it's got freight, and it's got commuter services. And uh, it's near my parents, which is where I'm going now. So hopefully that's some interesting tidbits for Rail on, uh, on me and why I love Harrow and Wheelstone. And uh, you should come here. It's great. And the Bakerloo Line trains, they toot at you. Isn't that great? Anyway, cheerio. Have a, have a Christmas and stuff. Bye. <laughs> Thanks, thanks, Simon. Um, I, I like that we got a little Bakerloo line toot. I was like, what on earth is that? And then remembered that the, the tube trains toot. How strange. Anyway, thanks, Simon. Um, I, did, I didn't get the very end of this, but I got most of this. And yes, thank you, Simon. Uh, I've learned something new from Simon recently. He did a talk for the Stoke Newington History Society group mm. and taught me that daggers are the name for like the sort of thing on the outside of... Um, Yes. Canopies. Yes. Yes. So that's that's something I learned from Simon. Um, but Heron Wilson, I also love Heron Wilson, and we did a podcast episode on it, and we mm. had um, uh, Dan from Signals to Danger come on, mm. mm-hmm. and we had someone who listened to it who was at the was there on the on oh, the wow. day of the crash in 1953, and he emailed us. And, you know, said he really loved the podcast, had this ongoing conversation. He lives quite near to where I grew up in Canada because he moved to Canada in the late 50s, early 60s and invited us to come visit him. And we weren't in the same place as him at the time, but he's still been emailing us. So hopefully one day we'll get to visit someone who was there on the day through our podcast, which is quite special. Absolutely incredible. And um, some a future episode and, and uh, Gareth uh, Aethwee, uh Sorry, Gareth, but one of the Gareth. There are many Gareths who uh, watch the show. Hello, all the Gareths. But um, pointing out that paramedics came out of the Harrow Wheelstone crash, yeah. and and John Bull did a great 
uh, yeah. story on a, a great Twitter thread on it, and and I think John, it'd be good to get John on up for an episode actually. Yeah, the but, angel um, of Platform Six and the woman who uh, I've forgotten her name, um, who really sort of the only woman there who came in from the American mil- military base. Yeah. And came over and started marking people out and triaging people yeah. in a way they'd never done before. Um, it's quite a, it's a, a, his, John's piece is, is beautiful about that. Um, it's a really moving story. It is a really moving story. And, and it, yeah, it's, it, yeah, a really brilliant and interesting bit of it. And uh, evidenced by both, the fact both of us can't remember her name. It's a, a classic example of like women kind of being written out of history. I right? want to say it's like Angela or, but I'm just, re- I think I'm remembering that from the Angel of Platform 6. I'm sure someone will We'll know it there. Um, Bessie, I, I'm just making up names. At this, this is the point. good thing about Abby Sweetwine. <laughs> Abby Sweetwine, it's an incredible yes. name, absolutely incredible name uh, yes. as well. Abby Sweetwine. Um, uh, yeah, she's a Black American nurse who became known as the Angel of Platform Six with her lipstick. With her lipstick that she marked uh, for triaging people. Absolutely, yeah, it's a brilliant story. Um, yes, uh, it is indeed. Yeah, everyone's saying, oh yeah, people pointing out that it is John's thread that people know this from. Yes, it's yeah. a good thread. It's oh, it's definitely thing. John's thread that all that information. Oh no, I've gone back to the "Should we abolish the Treasury?" episode. <laughs> yeah. I, it's fine. I, I figured ne- it out. I never made a out. guess work harder, and um, uh, it's 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 awful of me. Right. So okay. we have gone. What one, two, three, four? Oh, we're only four at four out of twelve done. So we and we're we're halfway through the episode in theory. Okay, we got to speed through these. Let's, then. let's so get it right. So up number three. Number three. Okay, here we go. Hello, and welcome to the Rail Natter Advent Calendar of Oddities. I'm John Stone, and I'm here to do mine today. Gareth asked us to do videos on location, and I'm on location here in my stairwell. <laughs> um, and the reason for that is because I have um, some printed out pictures of the British Rail Manual of Style on my wall and don't worry, I'm not just here to show you my wall. Um, The reason I've come here is because one interesting oddity we've got is to do with the British Rail logo or as it is officially known, the rail symbol. Um, And that oddity is if you look very closely at page or rather sheet 115 of the Manual of Style, um, you'll see that it says It has a series of instructions on how the rail symbol should be accurately reproduced. And it says, the top arrow points to the right. We all know that. Note that the outer arrows broaden slightly towards their tips. If incorrectly drawn parallel, they appear to taper outwards. So that's actually my oddity today. Um, It's that, yes, those, those arms on the rail symbol are not parallel. They taper outwards to the sides. And you probably looked at that a million times and you may not have noticed that, but that is careful design. Thanks very much and Merry Christmas. Yeah, thanks, John. Uh, there you go. So, right, we have, I don't know if we can do a poll on this. Uh, yeah, John Stone shows us how to cycle from his front door uh, to his kitchen. Yes. Um, we have, yeah, hello, lovely to, see, lovely to see John, friend of the show. Uh, I'm going to scribble out three. That was three, lovely. Now, I have the technology to do this, which is, uh, do I have the technology to do this? And engage with your audience. Start a poll. Uh, did, did you know, know this? Question mark. Uh, ask your community. There we go. We're engaging with the community, Emily. We have the technology. Yes, I've got the polls popping up now. There also, whoever said to listen to it at two times, it did make it go ahead of where it actually was, which was great so thank you for oh, Michael oh, that's clever. um and, and to be honest like it's it's, it's interesting it'd be interesting to know if people did or did not know this uh so uh feel free to yeah vote in the poll oh most most people didn't know that they didn't know that the uh the corporate identity symbol the rail symbol tapers and is not parallel uh at the uh, at the end oh that's cool ah. well there you go so it's one that i knew but i'm I have the corporate identity manual and I'm a bit of a nerd and a bit of a double arrow nerd generally yeah i I, I definitely didn't know that but also i've i'm you know I've only been in the country 12 years and, and I'm learning as I'm going. Uh, and you've also steeped yourself, steeped yourself within the lore of the underground. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm expanding now. I've started a checklist of all the national rail stations, hoping I get to them all. And it's, yeah, yeah. Pretty, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. pretty meager. I'm like, oh, wow, there's a few thousand more of these to do. <laughs> that's uh, it. That's it. Oh, marvelous. Oh, thanks everyone for voting. Yeah, there's, um, there's uh, most, the majority of people didn't know that fact. There you go. Um, I'll, I'll leave that. I'll leave that up there. That's fine. We could just leave that in the background. But um, nice one. Um, 
yeah, there's uh, there's there's it's, if if anyone hasn't find and get copies of the, the the corporate identity manual, which I've got over my everyone can see the white lump I have over my shoulder. In fact, if I go if I briefly go to two big faces, people can see you can see just the bottom of it here. That's the corporate identity manual, kind of placed on a plinth. At some point, I'll move it lower so it's actually within shot. But anyway, I didn't I didn't really design my shelves with framing in mind. But anyway, um, so yeah, that's it there. So it's well, it's it's a fantastic read. It's a very interesting uh, read. So. That was number three. I want to sort of keep the pattern we got going here and go to the to twelve, so we can Ooh, yeah, okay, we can mirror each it. other here. Number I 12. should have made some kind of symbol, and but no, never mind. <laughs> yeah, number twelve. Oh okay. uh, yeah, I quite like it. Yeah, no, I do. I do like a pattern as well. Yeah. Um, here we go. Number twelve. This, it's Hadcaster Viaduct. Eleven spans. These two flat spans here um, crossing the River Wharf. Spectacular. And it's a complete folly. <laughs> it's a useless structure. It was built in the in amongst the chaos or the, or the aftermath of uh, railway mania. The the I think there's the Leeds and York Railway were competing with one of the other railway companies in the area. Um, and a, another backhanded gentleman's agreement meant that this railway became completely pointless. And this viaduct and the earthworks that kind of were half built either side of it ended up being completely disused until from when it was built in 1848 until. Uh, I think the 1880s when they put a little branch line over it to reach a mill uh, and then it was used by the local electricity generating company and then it's empty again. Now you can walk over it, it's very nice, but completely useless. For me, fantastically represents how bad a job Britain did of building its railways <laughs> initially. Well, in fact, to be honest, in total, zero strategy, huge amounts of waste, uh, you know, swathes cut through the landscape purposelessly. Um, all in the name of grabbing whatever minerals and extracting whatever minerals we could and then passengers maybe a bit on the side. Hopeless. We were rubbish at building railways in this country. <laughs> Taddy Viaduct. They are. Tadcaster Viaduct. Um, yeah, there's... there's uh, so this is, this is a fantastic example. I don't, know, I, I don't know how many of these there are in London. London had a huge amount of duplication, of course, with many, many railway companies. But I don't know how many bits of infrastructure were built... And then, total, and then actually abandoned immediately. I don't know. Have you got? There, 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 must, there must be a few around, but I don't know. Are you aware of any anything kind of like that? I mean, I'm aware of the kind of the underground ones, like you know, the North End Station and things that were sort of started and nothing ever oh, yeah, came yeah, yeah, of yeah. them. Um, there's definitely lots of bits of kind of branch lines that I know of. I was looking at some recently kind of out in Metroland mm. that were only ever used to like move alfalfa and things like yeah. that. <laughs> like they were very, very minimally used and were hoping to put passenger service in. But yeah, I, I don't know anything quite that grand that was built for really no purpose. Yeah. It's, it's, I mean, it's a fun, it's a wonderful viaduct. It's lovely. Um, but it does go completely. What's even more frustrating is it's not even like they've used They've used it to create a through cycle path on the other side either. It's a dead end cycle path, basically. So it's like completely, it's a complete folly. Um, uh, but anyway, there, yeah, they, uh, there's me. Also, uh, having a director is useful, everyone, because there's me a bit too far from camera. I could have been 10 paces close to the camera, but when it's just me, <laughs> I'm, I've been having fun with the tripods and my... And I my this I my, do enjoy my... how much your jacket matches the general orangeness of rail now. Yeah. So that's <laughs> yeah. that's yeah, a nice that. con I, connection. I, I do enjoy my orange my orange jacket. Uh, I'm very pleased with it. Also, it's very warm. Cannot recommend it. It was an epiphany that Dina had, and she was like, this is the most comfortable jacket I've ever worn, and I had to immediately find and buy one. Um, I use it a lot. It's very nice for going outdoors in, in, in the hills. It's very warm. Anyway. That was number 12, uh, which I'm going to now promptly scribble out. So, yeah, um, this, this, this gets to a point that we make a lot in Rail Natter, is that actually there's this perception of Britain as having been this fantastic uh, kind of pioneer in, in modern railways, which, you know, yes, to, to, to a, a greater extent. But we did not build our railways very well. We, they, they were a, a hopelessly unstrategic mess. And, and, and certainly the railways at this end of the country, around sort of West Yorkshire, where it's, I've been preparing for another rail natter, doing some prep work for a future rail natter, which is going to be a very interesting one, everyone. I'm not going to tell you any more about it. But in this task I've been doing, it's trying to plot a, an actual strategic rail network, mostly using existing infrastructure. And it's almost completely impossible across like Yorkshire because all the lines just go to mines and have zero interest in population centres. And, yeah. it's, 
Uh, and, and it's you know obviously the railways were built to serve mines, but there is so much duplication, there is so much wasted effort, in, and there, it's just oh, there's so yeah. much of just this rich dude wanted to build a railway, or this rich dude didn't want a railway yeah. on his land, and it just becomes this this total mess of things. Like I was reading, this is probably apocryphal, but that the Bakerloo line was suggested as an idea by investors who worked in the West End and wanted to get to Lords to cricket matches, but an <laughs> existing method was too slow. So they were like, let's just build this this line. Probably not true, but still, oh, I think there is a lot believable. of elements of like, I just want to have a railway that goes here. Yeah. So that's... Absolutely, it was you know there were there were all sorts of vanities. There was corporate vanity. There was city vanity. There was personal. There were vanity. railways that were just built in competition because they didn't want the other railway to build their line there. Yeah. So it was just like we'll block them off here. Uh, just and... in, just completely bafflingly wasteful. Um, not not a good way to plan out a a rail network. Hence why our rail network is such a mess. Um, and still is such a mess. It makes no sense in so many places. Um, yeah. There we go. So that was uh, that was number twelve. Um, oh, here we go. We're getting to this. this is, we're, that's, we're halfway through now. We're halfway through. Um, hmm. Okay, I'm going to break the pattern now, I guess. Yeah, you've got to um, break the pattern. And I found out that if I listen to it on one and a half times, everybody sounds like chipmunks, but I get almost the right sound. So I'm going to go for number four. <laughs> number four. Okay, let's do number four. So I'm underneath uh, an overbridge next to where Eskrick Station used to be on top of where the East Coast Main Line used to be, because this used to be the 100 to 125 mile an hour East Coast Main Line, um, before in 1983 it was closed because the Selby Diversion had opened over that way. This, we'll, we'll get to the bridge in a minute, this, used, this was a spot in, um, in uh, November 1987 where Beryl Burtnoby opened the you know, f world famous cycling champion. She, she opened the cycleway, the, the solo way going from well, kind of not quite to Selby. It does go to Selby, but it goes along the Blink and A19 for quite a long time, uh, connecting up to York. Um, what's interesting about this bridge is that throughout the 1970s, you know, this is an ex mainline railway, but you can see that there, it's a fairly recently, well, re fairly recent design of, um, of, of concrete overbridge, you know, flat deck concrete bridge. Um, the bridge was lifted to provide passive provision for electrification. Uh, that was quite a thing up this corner of the, you know, this neck of the woods, because the, particularly on the East Coast Main Line, the plan was that it was going to be electrified. And so from this, right the way from, from, you know, through the 60s, particularly in the 70s, with bridge renewals under Roger Bastin, he was ensuring that all the bridges were renewed with sufficient clearance for electrification. A current electrification sort of green book. There's a little book. Not to be confused with the Treasury one. So I have that green book, actually. So that's, that's a very nerdy... Um, uh, it is a bridge over nothing, yeah. It is a very uh, nerdy little. I'm going to go two big faces so I can show you the book. This is the uh, this is the green book. This is the British Railways work instructions for AC electrified lines. This is the one from 1967, which is probably the edition that was being used by the team who did the bridge reconstruction work. Um, yeah, our BR29987 for anyone who's a real nerd. It's a lovely little book actually. It's all sorts of lovely bits and pieces in there. It's very nice, but um. So this is, you might think, why is there a railway with uh, passive provision for electrification that doesn't have a railway anymore? Well, Selby Diversion, blah, 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 I go on and on about it all the time. But um, it is a bit strange. People do, I've had railway people go, why has that, that's clearly been lifted for electrification, why? Uh, and the, the logic was because Selby Diversion was a very last minute thing because of coal. But the reality is that this railway was the East Coast Main Line and there were plans kind of in the back end of, modernization and, and, and West Coast electrification had happened. The East Coast Main Line was planned to be electrified. And Roger Bastin, as, as the guy who did the bridges on the Selby Diversion, by the way, was in was the, the bridge engineer and was saying, well, we'll, do pass, we'll rebuild the bridges. We will cr give them passive provision for electrification. Um, so there you go. We don't, do, we don't do enough of that sort of thing anymore. We, t we, we do passive provision for electrification only if we manage to get Treasury uh, drunk. Um, so yeah, yeah, it's 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 not something that's happening. My distraction there was by the solar system way on the sign for the cycle yes. route, because there's one of those in Woking. I remember, mm -hmm. I think it's a H.G. Wells nod, but I didn't know anything about the solar system way on the East Coast Main so, Line. That's a very so. Good point. so if I, I I'll, I'll do a squiggle circle. I don't know if it's actually the solar system way in Woking, but there's definitely like the Mercury route, the Saturn route. I cycle that way. I know Richard Smith's a big cyclist, and he's. Yes, Watching. so uh, this one is quite fun because between so along the bit of the the, 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 the East Coast Main Line that's now the the cycleway between York and Selby, uh, the, the 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 bit from York to the A19, um, 
when you join the cycleway kind of pretty much under the a64 there is a big sun and then to scale mm. from the big sun are all of the little planets of the solar system to the scale of the sun and you, so you keep going for a little while and you reach you know mercury and venus and then earth and then mars and so on and yeah. then the distances start getting very big as you work your way out to pluto and pluto is up a little on, on a little plinth um and they've got a voyager which is quite fun it's, it's quite good you know it's all to scale you get to what's weird though is that this was done by the university collaborated to create this there's another one in the university um which is a bit weird uh, so I don't know why they're, York has deems itself so so spacey that it gets two of these, but I, I love it. Yeah. Anyway, so it's quite good fun. You know, it's quite a nice cycle along here. Um, anyway, yeah, there we are. So That's number four, cool. uh, a a it's somewhat of a of a, a sideways titty, but um, anyway, there we are. Um, right. So oh golly, now I have to remember that was number number four. four. So scribble number four. Okay, uh, I can keep up the pattern by doing nine or two. I think I'm going to go with two. Going to go with two. Okay, let's gonna... do it. Number two. Hmm. I'm on the uh, the Hull to Hornsey branch, which which opened as its own thing uh, in about what, 1864. Got gobbled up by the NER, uh, the North Eastern Railway, in um, in 1866, and closed a hundred years later. <laughs> um, I, I, it's quite interesting. I, I was chatting to two ladies uh, just as I was setting up to film, uh, who used to they, they and their friends used to um, they were just walking their dogs and see them over there. Used to hop on the train to, to get into Hull quite regularly. It's actually quite a busy line, you know. But it used to take um, tourists up to Hornsey. Quite a useful little little branch line. But uh, yes, closed a hundred years, ex almost exactly a hundred years after opening. What's quite interesting about this line? In fact, why I'm doing this little tidbit is because it's exactly five kilometres of straight line up to Hornsey from here, which is 30% of the whole length of the branch line. So almost a third of the railway is just a straight line from here up to there uh, in Hornsey. But uh, there you go. Nice little, bit of, nice little bit of railway. It's now a very nice walk and cycle path. It is. I recommend everyone goes out. If you can, go and have a little little trip. I'm trying to get the White Wicks up to, to walk along some of these because there's some there are some quite nice little patches. Um, yeah, this one's lovely. It, it really is a absolute dead straight line for ages, like three three straight miles. As I say, a third of the railway is just this one straight line up to Hornsey, which is quite fun. Um, uh, yeah, it's quite it's quite nice. Uh, it was. I did all these. Actually, I did almost all these in one day, and it was getting increasingly dark, and it had just rained a lot. Um, but I was enjoying myself because I was driving around in our new little secondhand panda. Um, which uh, and, and splashing in puddles and generally getting it covered in filth. Um, because, funnily enough, there are no railways to these places because they all look like this now. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I was in Hull not very long ago and yeah. was riding buses around there. We didn't get up to Hornsea, but did to uh, uh, Al Alboro, I think it was Alboro. I oh, can't yeah, know yeah. exactly where we were. Um, but basically riding buses to places that all used to have stations. We'd be like, we're on Station Road again. No yeah. station. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of station roads. Anyway, there we are. Number two. Um, five kilometers of straight line. If there's any purpose for which you, I don't know, set up, setting up and testing a laser or something, then this, this might be where, where, you, can, where you can go and do it. Um, yes. So that was number two. Uh, there we are. Lovely. Uh, I just need to scribble this out so I don't, rem don't forget. Marvellous. Number two. Crikey, we're getting there. What's that? Six, eight, nine, and 11 left. Hmm. Okay. Um, Hmm. Let's hit up nine. Hit up number nine. Okay, let's do number nine. Uh, okay. Behind me here is the fine oh, Stamford again. Bridge Viaduct and see the approach spans and those lovely cast iron arches above. Uh, this was built in 1846, 1847 as part of the York to Market Wheaton line, which would eventually, post railway mania, be extended to Beverly. And um, this line was built. It's pretty average cost for the day. Um, the, the railway cost three hundred thousand to build, plus another four hundred, five hundred thousand for George Hudson to buy up a local landowner. Literally bought his entire estate and his fancy house. Um, so in total, in today's money, this stretch of railway cost four hundred ninety-two million to build. So that sets it at about twenty-three million a mile, which is about average for the day. Again, twenty-three million in today's money per mile. Um, it's probably about as much as it would cost to reinstate it now. Um, so that twenty-three million a mile sets it at about um, double the cost of the Leeds and Selby railway that had been built quite a bit earlier. 
um, about the same as the Liverpool Manchester Railway, which again had been built quite a bit earlier. So you can sort of see a bit of a comparison, and it is about um, half the cost. <laughs> so uh, half the cost of the uh, of the Great Western Railway, um, which was built at, at high watering, sort of fifty to sixty million pounds uh, a mile, because you know Brunel hopelessly over-engineered. Anyway, uh, so there you go. Uh, the, uh, the, the Stamford Bridge Viaduct there with some, with some monetary facts. There, monetary fact. I always like to get a bit of... Um, I, I quite enjoy comparing prices of building, of, of building railways now to how much railways cost to build 200 years ago or, or 160, 150 years ago. Um, there are a variety of different methodologies for judging. It's not just... Inf- you can't just use inflation against... Um, stuff that long ago because there's so many other variables that have changed and wibbled around and there's quite a good website that gives a, a variety of different calculation options um well yeah so um it's quite interesting looking at how much the cost of, of of that railway was it's relatively expensive there are other bits of railway like the stockton darlington was bonkersly cheap like just by even when you adjust it was just bonkersly cheap whereas this is kind of relatively expensive um for the day yeah Railways. Anyway, there's my. I, I think possibly that's the last of my face anyone has to deal with. Uh, yeah. As I said, more. If I'd been more organised, we'd have had more cameos. But anyway, you've got me out and about with some facts. <laughs> some facts for you. I'm enjoying the facts and learning about about the comparative costs of railways in. Yeah. Different different, different bits of different, different bits of Yorkshire. Yeah, exactly. I mean, any places that places that I can get to within uh, fairly short uh, access. Well, I'm this, just really pleased I went to East Riding recently because I'm like, I know where Beverly is. This this works. Exactly. You you, you kind of uh, you, you've got an idea of where things are. Yeah, I sure. literally went there because I'd never been to Hull before and I was getting British citizenship and you can choose anywhere in the country to have your citizenship ceremony. I'm like, ah. never been on Hull trains, never been to Hull. Hull's Take nice. I have a big I liked soft spot Hull for a Hull. Lot. Yeah. Um, that was, what, what, what number was that that we just did? Was it number nine? Ah, uh, yes. It was. Yeah. I memory like a goldfish. Um, yeah, I, I, I have a big soft spot for Hull. Um, it's a cool city. It's got loads of potential for all sorts of things. Um, not not least better kind of internal mass transit, but it's got you know it's got a big port. It's got the kind of a it like occasionally gets close to kind of having a big uh, sustainable energy industry explosion. Yeah, it's of got like the loads of wind turbines factory and stuff. there for the yeah. Turbines. So, so it never quite suddenly becomes like the Aberdeen of, you know, the Aberdeen for sustainable energy in the way that Aberdeen desperately now wants to and never will be. Sorry, Aberdeen, you missed that boat. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it, it's a cool city. And also it just has some fantastic, admittedly dubiously funded, but some fantastic architecture around Hull. Uh, really, uh, really quite a cool city. Yeah. Um, yeah. And a bit out of it. It's one of those cities that is that suffers for not being on a main, you know, on the main thoroughfare north south. Yeah. Um, uh, and unduly. I said to friends, like, oh, it's a great place. And they were like, I'd never think of there to go for a weekend away. I'm like, yeah. yes, do it. It's great. I loved yeah, yeah. it. And as you say, you can kind of plot out and about. You can go into these riding. There's bits and pieces to see. It's nice. It's nice around there. Yeah. Um, all sorts of fun stuff. Nice to, nice for cycling. Nice for all sorts. <clears throat> the numbers are thinning out now. Yeah. So. Um, I'm going to go for eight. Going to go for eight. Okay, let's do it. We're going for number eight. Um, here we go. Hello, we're Paul and Emily from the podcast Round of Round We Go. You know this because I'm on this episode of Rail Natter. Um, this is our gingerbread Newbury Park station, a station on the Central Line Hainault Loop in East London. It's most famous, though, not for the trains part of the station, but for the spectacular Grade 2 listed bus shelter, which was designed by Oliver Hill in 1937, wasn't completed until 1949, and it's got this little blue black marker on it which shows that it won an award for architecture in the 1951 Festival of Britain. This has got a strange new lease of life on Google Maps because it appears as both an Elizabeth Line and Anglia station. It is not served by trains from either of those lines, (laughs) but we think it's saying that because the bus station is served by rail replacement buses for both those services or it's a Google Trap Street, we're not sure. So firstly we just need to admire this stunning creation because it is brilliant i can't take much credit for it my job is mostly coloring the icing and rolling the dough i am not the artistic (laughs) one in this pairing (laughs) but it's so good it's so good um 
it, it's brilliant. I, it's just continuing that your your. I mean, you've now embedded it as a firm tradition. It's not like, oh, we did this a couple of years running. It's now like, this is now a... Yeah, we've done it three years, and I'm, and it's still a conversation we have randomly throughout the year, being like, what are we going to do this year? And there's so many there's so many stations that are almost... Paul's obsessed with the idea of doing the inside of Westminster Station. He's like, now we know how to bake on curves. We can do it. I'm like, you have fun because I'm the one who rolls the dough and dyes the icing. Yes. Oh, my goodness. I mean, that would be a masterpiece, uh, uh, but it would also be a nightmare. That would be like yeah. a house of cards. Um, yeah. I, I love it. It's so good. You're gonna have so so it's it's an excellent little oddity as well. Why on earth it's got? Well, we know why. You've explained why. But the second potential reason, um, which is uh, is the um, what what do you mean by the Google a Google Trap Street? Is that what you said? Yeah. So trap streets are what they used to put on old maps that were um, uh, Ah. like essentially tricking yes if someone else copied your map you'd know that your map was copied and that you know they'd stolen the map from you because you put a fake street that didn't really matter in a small place yeah and possibly google's doing that because they do things like uh say finsbury park is listed as an overground station often although it seems to come and go and it's definitely not on the Mm. overground it's on national rail but not on london overground so we don't know if that's trying to stop people from stealing Google Maps or it's just Google doesn't know what's going on. Yeah, I, it's a weird one because that a part of me is like, no, don't do that, Google, because a lot of people rely on um, a lot of people rely on that public service. So don't confuse people by suggesting a bit of it is somewhere yeah. where it isn't. But uh, yeah, let's go with Google's uh, not hugely aware of what's going on as the as the explanation. It also the like likely. names areas of cities that no one calls them by. It's yeah. strange. <laughs> like you don't get like, oh, this area is Stoke Newington or whatever. You get some strange estate name that's not. It's strange. Anyway. Yeah. Given that most of Google mapping or a lot of Google mapping now just pulls straight from OpenStreetMap. Um, this surprises me because OpenStreetMap generally does use like logical names and, and names that, that, yeah. that people. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a strange one. Anyway, Richard's saying Finsbury Park sounds like a rail replacement bus thing. It does when when the goblins down the rail replacement bus stop there as well. So could be yeah. It might be, yeah. It might be some strange thing where they struggle that they have to have the, the the line there to allow them to route the replacement bus functionality. Uh, yeah. there, 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 there must be some there, there there must be some reasonable explanation for this. Um, that was number eight. And just fabulous. Everyone soak it in. What what a sensational bit of uh, gingerbread architecture right there. So and good. I didn't have to listen to the audio because I only said it about six hours ago. So. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, so that was number eight. All um, right, let's hit number six. We've got seven more minutes. Number six. I know, we're, do- we're doing all right. We're doing all right. Number six. Ah, so you don't have to listen to anything on this one because it's just me. This is just a—it's a silent one again. This is Excellent. a bit of a—this te- is a bit of a teaser for the, uh, for the for a future episode, probably one of my Pat leave episodes. Frankly, oh look, talking of which, there's Dina cameoing in a mass because we did this video, uh, or rather, I did some filming of this bit of railway line back in 2021. I think it will be. Um, this is the 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 Montenegro end of the Belgrade Bar Railway which is an absolutely spectacular bit of railway. And this viaduct that I'm trying to film between little tunnels um, is is the uh, Malarieka viaduct, which until pretty recently, uh, a Chinese bridge overtook it. It was the tallest railway bridge in the world. Like it had the, the it was the, the highest above the ground of anything else anywhere other than the, a, a new bridge which is opened in China. But it's spectacular. It's hearing me desperately filming it. I don't know how I'm going to edit. It's probably going to be two two natters split because there's a lot of footage. But anyway, um, the Malarieka Viaduct, spectacular. But that's a, a little tease for the future, everyone, um, to enjoy the the Belgrade Bar Railway. But it is spectacular. I, 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 like there are quite a few spectacular bits of railway in the in the in the Balkans. Um, the other one I did was um, Mostar to Sarajevo, which is also incredible. But um, have you had a, have you had, a, had the, the thrill of riding any railways in the in them parts, Emily? Yes, I have. I've been to Belgrade, and then I went from Belgrade to uh, Rijeka in Croatia, oh, yeah. and then no to Zagreb, then Rijeka, and then up to via Ljubljana. So I've done, but only sort of the main lines around yeah. there. But we are we bought some cheap interrail passes that we're going to use early this year to go from London to Istanbul. So it's oh, wow. a good thing to keep to keep in mind. Yeah. Oof. 
So Belgrade Bar is... Uh, Dina was like, oh, yeah, we should do this. We, we, we're going to do this. I was worried because Dina is a destination person. And it's, you know, she loves the destination. The journey uh, is is kind of a, a... Whereas for me, I'm... I enjoy the destination, absolutely. But I also adore the journey. I find the journey yeah. quite fun. So I was really nervous that, you know, 12 or 13 hours of railway journey in one in the same train might have been a bit of a push. But I was, because it was so spacious, possibly a bit covid uh, that helped it to be a bit more empty. It was so spacious. We had loads of room to walk around. We had loads of snacks. With, actually, we didn't have enough snacks. We were starving. Uh, so stock up on more snacks is, is my recommendation. But it, it was stunning. And the views are so dynamic. It changes. You get these gorges as you come through Serbia, these steep gorges. And then you come out of Serbia briefly into Bosnia, then back into southern Serbia, and things get even more spectacular and grand. And then you come into Montenegro, and you're by this point, you're up in the mountain. It's just, it's amazing. Absolutely amazing. Sounds um, stunning, yeah. I've done Cross Canada, which is my favorite by far. But yeah, Trans Siberian, that one was too long and not enough out the window. So I'm <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm looking forward for to one with a little bit more movement. Cross so I'm <coughs> going across Canada is an interesting one because yeah, I've got uh, so so um, a few people who've done it and, and say it's absolutely worth it. So I guess the views are they are dynamic enough that you like that you that it's yeah. that and it you're moving around trip. the train and if you're in the sleeper class, it's really nice. You're mm. I I mean I honestly I've done it twice now not the full way twice but mostly twice and just sitting up in the observation car you can sit there you get the mountains oh, you get the prairies you get yeah. the lakes and you know it's just it's such a, a variety of landscapes i mean i know i'm i'm biased but <laughs> i do i You're do really love it and the trains that were in put in in 1954 and they're they i don't know if they've got it tender now they put it out to tender to replace them oh, so they God. don't have that much more life in them <gasps> and you can see videos of how little they've changed they mm. have these really sort of futuristic for the 50s looking like railings and things oh. and they're incredible and the staff are wonderful and you just have they tell you all about it and stories about the history of the railway it's it is yeah, compared Definitely to the Trans-Siberian, it is a much nicer experience. Yeah, yeah. It's it's absolutely on the bucket Yeah, list. Vancouver to Toronto is amazing. Samuel's saying it. That's oh, yeah, what yeah, we've yeah. done. The ocean side is my favorite part of Canada, but the train's terrible. It goes nowhere near the oh, ocean really? for a train <laughs> called the ocean. But, yeah. I mean, it's, it's absolutely has to be uh, has to be on the list. Um, uh, yeah, it's on my bucket list very, very much. It's the sort of thing that we might be like, you know what? If we pack enough baby things, uh, you know, we do it. It's uh, we, we'll I, make it happen. I, there, I have been on the train with people with with young children. So and you know, it's fun. You can. I saw you know this dad sitting showing his son out the out the window the whole time. It was really nice. Oh uh, yeah, absolutely. So this leaves Emily. You're relieved of your uh, number choice duties because yes. this leaves number eleven. Um, yeah. As we as we slip towards the end of the episode, the end of our festive fun times. Oh, you know what I didn't put on? It's, it's, I didn't have my Christmas hat on, uh, partly because I've no idea where it is. Uh, I think I had. You're it right. You got your Christmas thing. jumper. I've got Christ- yeah, I've got a Christmas jumper on. It's fine. Um, so, number eleven. Let us uh, first of all. I've got to press Control P to. Oh no, it's not. It's fine. It's fine. Working. I don't need to do this. I can wibble my whack around and press number eleven. Number eleven. Welcome to Welcome tonight's Real Matter. Matter. There we go. There we go. Welcome. Welcome to tonight's, tonight's Rail Natter. <laughs> Welcome to tonight's Rail Natter. This is only the beginning. They won't stop now. Uh, yes, um, it's a bit of a tease for next year's Rail Natter. There's, yes, it's going to be. I, I might well be uh, somewhat distracted by uh, big life things next year, but there are some fun Rail Natter plans uh, ahead. Um, there are a few teases in there for things coming up. Uh, yeah, um, I suppose it's a case of thanks to everyone who's been watching for. Uh, we've been doing this for a long time now. What's that's the end of end of 2022? I started this fairly early in 2020. We're getting close to two years, which is bonkers. Um, golly, uh, yeah, um, and it's thanks to guests like Emily that that, that this show continues to um, continues to <laughs> kind of propagate and exist. Um, yeah, so. Um, that was it. That's that's some some mild some hints as to what's coming up in the future, um, and that was our that was our little little advent of oddities. I'd, I'd, yeah, well, a, a new format once I again. I enjoyed it. Learned new things and got to see different people. And maybe next year it'll be less of just you, but it's not a criticism. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, less of me is good. Um, uh, that, that's always a positive thing because people have 
you know, what is it? The best part of 400 hours or so. I've, I've no idea how much rail natter there is, but way too much. The, the, you, know, you know, creaking at the seams volume of, of slow content for everyone. Um, it's a, Yeah, it's going to be a fun year. Um, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I am very, very excited for some of the bits and pieces that will be coming out in pre-records. Um, there were some fun things I did in the year of, of traveling around uh, by train on my onesie for no reason, and then people seem to enjoy me just waffling on. Um, I quite enjoyed it when I went with, in fact, with Simon, who was on a minute ago. Um, yeah. We went on our little adventure. Um, but I need to, I need some underground railway tours. So, you know, on, on which subject? If I very briefly uh, bring us to the, the outro part of the pod, which is where I go, this is available on audio-only format. I've no idea how this will work in audio-only, um, but uh, enjoy, the, for those who do listen in audio-only format, uh, enjoy on all podcasting platforms. Um, Patreon.com slash Gareth Dennis for the Patreon paypal.me slash Gareth Dennis for loose change slash abuse uh, and Gareth Dennis UK slash discord for the YouTube chat to continue. Uh, Richard, I would love to go on an adventure. We could we could go on an adventure. Yeah, if you want to come on a rail natter adventure, uh, pitch, <laughs> send your pitches. Um, uh, but the reason I would just race through the waffling there is because I'm going to bring Emily back is um, yeah. obviously everyone should listen to Randall Round We Go. And I just thought, Emily, what's what's the latest? What's the latest? Because last time we were chatting, you were recording, you were doing some prep. Doing yeah, some... so we released some episodes last January, and then spent all year saying we're definitely going to get some done sometime this year. But that has not happened. We've had <laughs> uh, jobs and travels and a civil partnership and a British citizenship and a oh, lot of yeah. things going on. Yeah. So um, we're bringing more episodes out on the third of January. Yeah. So. We're, yeah, we're doing eight more tube stations randomly chosen. We've got a guest, at least one guest for sure, um, who appeared in, in the in the calendar at one point. So oh, ooh, that's, oh. that's, that's the biggest hint I'll give. Um, and yeah, so we're, we're going, we're doing the biggest station we've done so far, which is possibly one of the biggest stations we will do. But yeah, um, yeah we're excited for it. Oh, some interesting little teases there for you all, for all of you watching. So we normally, normally the, the festive episodes are, a, are a, let's say, a more a tight knit set of, of, of uh, live views viewers um you know we, we we have the smaller but more perfectly formed uh, viewership and the benefits that you get of coming and joining these festive episodes particularly one like this that's live uh, which is quite unusual um is that you get all the little hints and, and teases like this from um from emily and i about what's to come which is very exciting but yeah go follow randall round uh, we go on twitter there's fairly regular fun content of uh, station identification there was a really good handles one recently that just absolutely flummoxed me yeah uh, there are there are I, people sometimes complain that I put ones up that are too difficult, but I'm like, <laughs> every any one of them people get, I can show one tile and someone's like, yep, it's definitely, <laughs> you know, whatever station. And I'm just, there are people that are so good at it. So if you know underground stations or if you want to learn underground stations, because I never paid attention to these things this closely until I started mm. posting them up. And now people send them to me. And I'm like, <laughs> I have no idea which station that is, but I am getting better. Yeah, absolutely. You're, you're sort of brains doing the, uh, you're, you're doing deep machine learning within your yeah, brain yeah, with yeah. all these. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, the next episode, the next episode shall be, uh, not of Randall Rand we go, um, the next episode of Rail Matter um, is with John Worth, actually. Um, that'll be, golly, what will it be? The 3rd of January, question mark? Uh, yeah, the 3rd no, the is we're releasing our next episode, so it must ah, be the 4th, because we do Tuesdays. Yes, you yeah, do yeah. Tuesdays, I do Wednesdays. It's the 4th. Um, John Worth is joining us. And talking about, it's, it's off the back of his uh, blog that he did, which is really interesting, but it kind of captures a lot of what he's learned on his uh, on his cross-border rail shenanigans that he's been doing. So we'll chat to John about that. But he, he's going to talk about um, this implementation gap with European railways. You know, the, there's, there's all sorts of big talk for European railways, you know, European railway authorities, the EU, others, European Parliament, talking big about railways, but doing very little, frankly. Um, and uh, we're going to explore that with John. Why is that? And what? how can that kind of get broken down? What can we do to kind of unlock some of that? So that should be a really interesting one. A good start to the year, uh, a bit of a proactive one. Um, yeah, that should be should be a lot of fun. Um, day before Gareth Aethwee's, um birthday. Oh, there we are. Everyone who's been in the chat, um, if, if, if you have a question for Emily, feel free to send it through. We are, we're are we running five minutes long already. Apologies. Sorry, yeah, Emily. Sorry. Um, no, that was me. That's me. I was rambling on about things. <laughs> no, it's fine. If you have questions for either of us, uh, chuck, chuck them our way. But um, no, Emily, thanks so much. That's been a, an absolute delight. I knew it would be because you're always good fun. Um, yeah, and so, great uh, time. Yeah, yeah. Um, I... I mean, other than Randall Rampot, uh, we go pod. I'm also 
a year of waiting for what the next gingerbread creation is going to be is uh, is going to be hard work. That we're, if we're it ends up being Westminster, it. that. I think that I think that's probably beyond our capability. I think we need about four or five years to actually make that that happen. But I don't know. I was at, we were outside Tottenham Hale today, and I was like, "This is new, and it's we have gone forward in time, so it does feel like we need to." Yeah, yeah, certainly. yeah. What, yeah. I mean, there are. It, the thing is, it depends on whether you go for like what the balance of edibility versus constructability is. Right? Oh, we don't eat any of it because it's. Like, we were cleaning it off today with the toothbrush we used to clean mold off the grout in the bathroom. So no one's eating any of that. We left the other one. We we can deconstructed it like two days ago. It was still sitting on top of our fridge covered in dust all year because we couldn't bring ourselves to break it up. It's because you create such beauty. You know, can you smash the beauty of the gingerbread railway station, the gingerbread tube station to bits? Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Raphael saying King's Cross is a good call. We're... We're trying to stick with tube stations because our it is tube stations. But I was sort of thinking like the Rainbow Tunnel or something that would be fun. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Rainbow. That, that's it. That's it. Yeah. What? Well, there definitely some. Oh yeah. I suppose bringing the color in is a. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All... There aren't very. We did talk about are there any sort of colorful postmodern stations, but there, there really isn't. So. Yeah, that's it. It does make it a bit trickier. Right. Anyway, everyone in the chat, uh, have a lovely rest of your holiday. Emily, thanks so much for a a, a delightful festive episode. Um, Thank you for having me again. It's been wonderful. A pleasure. Uh, enjoy the rest of your holiday. And I will uh, see all of you uh, in a week uh, for another live episode because I haven't done any pre-records this holiday because Dean and I are at home because uh, travel is not easy right now. <laughs> it's not easy, um, yeah. as you might imagine. Anyway, Emily, everyone, cheerio. Thank you. Merry cheerio. Christmas. Merry Christmas, everyone.